On a remote shooting range outside Adelaide, Australia, ballistics experts are faced with a formidable task to replicate the exact trajectory of a bullet that passed through two men, caused seven wounds, and came out looking almost pristine. This so-called magic bullet pierced President Kennedy's back, leaving a round wound. But the wound it left in Connolly's back was very different. It was elongated, almost three centimeters across, as long as the bullet itself. It appears that the bullet went into Connolly sideways. Our ballistic detective's first challenge is to understand why this happened. So we brought out a three-foot block of ballistic gelatin, a substance that mimics the reaction of human tissue when it's maintained at exactly 10 degrees centigrade, or 50 Fahrenheit, and allows us to analyze the flight path of the bullet. Beautiful. Ready to go. Stand by! Whoa! Wow, what a deflection. The projectile has traveled a good 50 centimeters through the block before then starting a bit of a yawing pattern whereby it's veered off to the right. As the bullet slowed down, it angled or yawed in flight. It took 50 centimeters of gelatin for this bullet to yaw. Would passing through Kennedy's neck, just 14 centimeters from back to front, be enough to create this same yaw? and explain the elongated entry wound seen on Connolly's back. Simple ground level testing is no longer sufficient. We need precise angles and distances. We need to transform this ballistic range into Dealey Plaza. Our gel blocks will be arranged here, just behind the Stemmons Freeway sign in the center of Elm Street. Our gunman will fire from a platform 60 feet in the air, placing him on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. The long side of this right triangle measures 180 feet, the distance calculated by the House Subcommittee on Assassinations in 1978 for the second shot. Wes begins with a gel block representing President Kennedy. It is exactly five and a half inches, or 14 centimeters thick. Now we'll get a, uh, a height measurement. 47 and a half inches high. After consulting the line drawing of the limousine and extrapolating measurements from a photograph, the team arrives at a height for Kennedy's back wound. A target marker is placed exactly 47 and one half inches off the ground. 47 and a half inches. Now, we need to put the witness board up, so we'll need a 60 centimeter standoff from the exit out of the block. This white card or witness board will record both the height of the bullet strike and the angle or yaw of the bullet. The House Subcommittee in 1978 determined that the distance from the Kennedy throat wound to the Connolly back wound was 23 and one half inches or 60 centimeters. Okay, the height above the ground to the muzzle is 20 yards by the laser rangefinder, and the line of sight from the muzzle to the point of aim on the target is 60 yards. Where's rotate the block about three degrees to your right? Perfect, that's it. We do have a small keyhole. This keyhole shows that the bullet has begun to turn, but it's not as elongated as Governor Connolly's wound. The problem is that the clear gelatin block is not an accurate model of Kennedy's neck. A human neck is filled with dense sinew, which might slow and deflect a bullet more. We need a better surrogate. What we have here is a sinew block. We've actually put some, some ropes, a few things that are going to cause a little impediment to the bullet. Not the same as bone, but something that's going to try and obstruct its path as it's going through the block. The bullet cut a straight line through the tough neck simulant. But look closer. 
In this frame, we can actually see the bullet starting to turn, and the simulated entry wound is almost a dead ringer for Connolly's. More like 60 degrees again. In fact, it's almost an identical amount of yaw. That's extraordinary. So far, our ballistic recreation of Oswald's second shot is incredibly yes. accurate. But Alex is not ready to shoot the magic bullet yet. There are other wounds to consider. This time, Wesley Fisk will represent Governor Connolly's chest with two thin gelatin blocks. The human thorax is not one piece of muscle. It is a piece of muscle, some bone, then an air space, the lungs, and then another piece of tissue after that. Oh, this is, uh, this is beautiful. We have a keyhole approximately one inch in length. The entry wound on Connolly's back is again a near perfect match. And the high speed footage shows the gel block representing his chest opening up about two inches. A good match to the medical description of his exit wound. we're clearly getting close. Our bullet is on the Mark II. The nose is pristine, but it's slightly flattened, with the soft lead core beginning to ooze out of the back, remarkably like Exhibit 399. We're ready to travel back in time, to attempt to fire the shot that spawned suspicion of conspiracy. Could Lee Harvey Oswald have made seven wounds with one bullet? Can our gunman do it again? <laughs> <laughs>